Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Midday Western U.S. Regional Forecast video brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. I want to get some bigger perspective on this growing season for the Western region, so we're going to look here at a map that shows you growing degree day unit anomalies from March 1st all the way through the 29th of July. And what's interesting is we've had a few discussions with some with some producers out west, and uh, some folks are talking about how their crop is ahead, and others are talking about how it's behind. And it's interesting because when you look at what's going on, especially in the Pacific Northwest, we can see that much of Oregon and Washington in the northern half of Idaho looks at be ahead on growing degree day units, and things are progressing pretty quickly. But with time, we've actually seen a bit of a deficit in parts of the Snake River Valley. And so when we think about some crops that are grown there, specifically some of the wheat, but of course uh, the potatoes, the onions, and other row crops that are grown in that area, uh, they, they're ready for a little bit of heat just to kind of bring this crop back on, on, on track. It's been quite wet in parts of Montana recently, and as a result, uh, we're, we're behind on the accumulation of heat there. And even though we've had some scorching temperatures in the desert southwest, overall since March, now this is a long-term statistic here, since March we are, are technically below average on the way we normally accumulate heat. And it's evidenced for the rest of us around the country because we're not hearing the, the daily news stories of the extreme heat that's happened in the desert southwest. Even in parts of the Central Valley of California and through here, although we have seen some extreme heat recently, overall um, there, there is still your near average and slightly below average at times. Let's now add to this what our recent precipitation picture looks like. So this is the last 60 days in terms of total accumulated precipitation. And I want you to see the difference between the northwest and the southwest. Specifically, if you come over here into parts of northern, um, you know, Washington and, Mont uh, excuse me, uh, Idaho, western Montana and also parts of, of Oregon, we, we've had some drier locations. Uh, Snake River Valley has been benefiting for, from some thunderstorms and hence the wetter conditions here. And of course, that flow out of the northwest going through parts of Montana with that Canadian storm track has kept things wetter there. But California, look at the difference here. Uh, we've, we've been quite wet compared to normal over the last 60 days. And we do know that this is the dry season. And with the monsoon that's going right now, we're going to continue to see parts of the southwest continuing to stay wet. Because of that, I wanted to check in on some reservoir health. Specifically, I'm going to go right here to those that are around Yakima uh, because we have seen some of the reservoir levels fall as they normally do this time of year. But looking at some of the values here, there is um, right now just uh, some stress on some of the reservoirs. And why I'm pointing this out is we need to keep a close eye on it, just given that um, water management practices are going to become, I, I, I think, a key thing to be paying attention to as we get into the later half of our drier season here, given what some of the reservoirs look like right here, especially some of the larger ones. Well, you know that the Northwest was dry. Well, the southern part of the, the Western region, specifically California, has been the opposite. Huge snowpack, full reservoirs to finish our wet season. And since then, we've, you know, maintained above average compared to historical levels here in our reservoirs. So uh, not no major, major drought stress moving across California at this point. Where is the dry weather? Well, it's on the other side of the planet over in Siberia. This is some smoke from some wildfires moving through Siberia that's actually moved all the way over into Alaska. But what's amazing is after I show you this view uh, from space here is what it looks like across the western United States. And there are very, very few fires to be talking about. Now, I remember 2017. I remember not being able to see the western United States for how much smoke was coming from the fires. We really only have a very few smaller regions comparatively that are burning. In fact, when I look at this, I see a whole lot of green. Um, one area that we are watching is right here. There's a fire kind of right there on the border of California and Oregon. And because of that, the National Weather Service does have out air quality uh, you know, issues in that particular region from the smoke of that fire. Otherwise, what are we watching? A red flag warning up through parts of Montana. Some lower humidity, stronger winds, and high temperatures moving through there. And we will be talking about the potential for flash flooding with our monsoon now going here in the southwest. So let's get into it. I'm going to start you off with the high temperature anomaly. So these are differences from normal. We can see that on uh, Tuesday here, we're going to be bringing in some very warm conditions uh, into parts of Montana and Wyoming, and as well as the Snake River Valley, where we're five, six, seven degrees above average on temperatures. Uh, the heat wave we did endure in California, well, things are back much closer to normal with temperatures there right around average. And the Northwest still dealing with the broader troughing across that region, uh, hanging on to some cooler temperatures. As I click play on this, though, we can go ahead and look and see how temperatures evolve as we go from Tuesday, this is again looking at Tuesday's high temperature anomalies, 
uh, into the day on Wednesday. Heat stays on here. Why do we see the cooler weather in here? That's the monsoon going. I'll show it to you in a few minutes. Upper level flow pattern is going in a clockwise fashion just like this right now. And that's why there's heat on this side and cooler on that. Still very warm couple of days up here in Montana moving forward compared to average. Getting you into Thursday, it's kind of a wash, rinse, repeat pattern. Notice this similar story here as we get through the forecast. As we get toward the end of this, this is August 5th here. I've got you out to next Sunday, and this is August 6th. You do start to see the warmth building back in west, where we see a lot more above average temperatures for the rest of the western United States. Uh, and we'll talk about why that is in a few minutes, but it has a lot to do with the position of the ridge and the ocean temperatures out in the uh, Pacific. So what are we picking up on here through the next five days? That's what you got over here. Above average temperatures in the Canadian prairies getting into parts of Montana. Above average temperatures, New Mexico, Colorado, western Texas, uh, and uh, parts of uh, Kansas and Oklahoma as well. But much of the West Coast deals with normal temperatures. It'll be days 6 through 10 over here on the left where we start to see the broader ridge taking place, warming things up above average again. Northwest flow on the other side, keeping things very wet in the central United States. Stretching it all the way out to the 11 to 15 day time period here. Again, we're going to be favoring at times above average temperatures, but the monsoon will be going in here. It's a lot of cloud cover and precipitation into the four corner states, Nevada and parts of the desert there in Southern California. So if we just take a look at what we're expecting in terms of precipitation uh, on the whole compared to normal, our main storm track coming out of the Pacific is doing something a bit like this going into Southern Canada. And we're just going to be watching for this broader ridge to be bringing the precipitation kind of cycling around just like this. So overall, uh, this is a near normal pattern for much of the western United States, and it's the dry season, so it's dry along the west coast, and we got the monsoon cranking here in the midsection uh, of, uh, of uh, the Intermountain West. So that's a bigger picture on precipitation. We kind of play it out and just see what the operational European model is picking up on. Again, you're going to see a lot of systems sliding in through here and flashes of green almost daily uh, right in through this area. So here we go. First system, let just step you back there, moves through, possibly bringing some widely scattered showers and storms to uh, parts of Washington and Oregon as we progress through the middle of this week. But outside of that, you can see the monsoonal kind of tongue of moisture right in through here, and that's the name of the game. Northwest British Columbia takes mo much of the storm systems coming through. Maybe by the end of the week, this is Friday morning into Friday afternoon, some coastal rain for parts of Oregon and Washington. But outside of that, it's a relatively drier pattern moving forward, except for the monsoonal flow right here in the midsection of the Intermountain West again. And we just see as I continue to play this out, that seems to be the name of the game. Now, bigger picture as we move toward the end of this uh, forecast video here, uh, I want to show you the current ocean temperature anomalies. We certainly have been talking about the very warm conditions that are in the North Central Pacific. This is what it's currently doing to the flow of the atmosphere ridge building over Alaska, going into a high over low pattern out in the Gulf, broader ridge over the west, deeper trough over the east, and then same thing happening in the North Atlantic. And because of that, this ridge, this ridge, and this ridge don't want to move. We might be in this particular pattern for a while. Uh, the ridge is over Greenland. That was complements of the heat wave that happened in Europe. It's kind of shoved all of this back in that direction, back toward Greenland. We call that a retrograding ridge. And because it's kind of blocked up the flow, see how it kind of looks like, well, it's not a big straight line I drew there. It's quite curvy. And the high over low pattern, the lows being here, here, and here, might be one that becomes quite stagnant as we move through the month of August. And so we're going to have to watch it carefully. It is not the super highly amplified pattern that we have seen in the past, bringing in major heat and drought threat as well as fire threat but it's a ridge nonetheless across the western united states and with the loss of our el nino signal down here um, this particular pattern has more staying power that's really what i want to say about it okay we'll watch it carefully keep you updated with each video that we produce so that you know what to expect in terms of how this trough ridge uh, pattern is going to change but you've seen the outcome and the longer range temperature and precipitation forecasts and i'll be updating you on the really long range stuff uh, in the middle of the day tomorrow so hopefully that gives you some perspective but we'll wrap it up right there we nutrient ag solutions thank you for your attention hope you look forward to all of our forecast content coming out this week at my.nutrientagsolutions.com have a great week we'll talk to you soon thank you